Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is gonna be how to use side imaging, mark the waypoint, and then go and find the waypoint again. Um, we're gonna be fishing, hopefully these crappie are still gonna be stacked up on this little concrete uh, pillar, sunken pillar. Um, I'm here on the St. Croix River today. This video is kind of gonna be putting together how to use your 2D sonar marking the waypoint and then how to use your down imaging marking the waypoint because we are gonna be using 2D and down imaging in this video as well. But primarily I wanted to focus on what I'm looking at on side imaging, how I'm seeing these fish kind of stacked up on this piece of concrete. Hopefully they're still there. They were there four days ago, so hopefully, fingers crossed, they're still there. And uh, how to find that waypoint once you mark it on your, on your screen. Um, and then how to use the combination of 2D and down imaging to really make sure you're throwing out a, a buoy waypoint or that buoy exactly where you mark that waypoint. So let's go first, make sure we can find some fish with the side imaging and then uh, throw that buoy out and then we'll try to catch some. Before we go and find some fish and mark some waypoints, I gotta pay for this tank of boat gas. So huge thank you to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. They sent me this wallet about a month ago and compared to my old wallet, which was super bulky, I don't even know what I was carrying in there, a bunch of different credit cards, cash, and of course a ton of different fishing licenses. This has made my life a lot easier, not carrying a bulky wallet in my boat. This super thin profile carbon fiber wallet, not only does it look cool, that thin profile is a lot easier to put in my pocket uh, when I'm gassing up at the gas dock or if I hop out to a marina to grab lunch or something like that. You can put your credit cards, your ID, fishing license, cash, everything you need for on the boat in this thin wallet. They have over 30 different color patterns for these wallets. Uh, this is the carbon fiber. They also have burnt titanium, which looks really cool. And you can get it for 10% off. Use ridge.com forward slash davis for 10 percent off use promo code davis at checkout and if that wasn't enough to entice you to check out these wallets from right now up until september 18th for every dollar that you spend at ridge.com that puts you in a raffle to draw for a 2020 jeep gladiator or fifty thousand dollars in cash you win the grand prize you get to pick brand new Jeep to tow your boat or 50,000 bucks to buy yourself a new boat. So check out ridge.com forward slash Davis, promo code Davis for 10% off. It'll be the top of the video description. Click that link, check out Ridge Wallets. Huge thank you again to Ridge Wallets for sponsoring this video, paying for this tank of boat gas. Let's go find some fish. All right, now you can see I got, I got this brush pile already marked or this, I marked it as a brush pile. I don't have a uh, waypoint for like a concrete pillar or anything, but I'm gonna show you here on side imaging, once we get right over the top of it, what this thing's gonna look like. My side imaging settings, I go 40 feet left and right. Oh, there it is right there. This is not very big. It is not very big at all. And typically what I've been finding this throughout the summer, these fish have been stacked up on it but they've been super tight to that concrete pillar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to both my 2D and my down imaging. And if you see on the down imaging screen, there are fish stacked above it right there, but they are super tight. Oh, they are super tight to that brush, to that, uh, that concrete piling. You can either do it a couple different ways. You can go on your 2D screen once you kind of figure out exactly where it is, or you can go on your side imaging Either if you got a toggle thing up here, you can drag your cursor over to where it is. Um, the touch screens, you can just tap it. Once you tap it, right there, just like that, it'll put the cursor there. And then you just tap your waypoint button to add the waypoint. I already have this marked out, so I don't need to tap the waypoint button. Um, and then I go back to this split screen where I can see my GPS and my side imaging function. Let's zoom out there. So this is the screen you should be looking at. I'll screenshot that so you guys can see that a lot better. That's the screen you should be looking at. Now to get back over them, I like to get a little bit of a running distance here, or a running start. Get some distance between you and that waypoint so you can line up the bow of your boat right to the waypoint. And ideally, I don't wanna use side imaging to go right over the top of it. Um, once I've marked the waypoint, I wanna to try to go over it with a down imaging screen or a 2D screen and then drop a buoy marker. Um, the 2D and down imaging is gonna give you a much more accurate location of where that brush pile, or in this case, this concrete pillar is, um, where these crappie are holding. And then I'm gonna zoom in as far as I possibly can and still be able to see my waypoints. 
and that'll give you probably the best chance at going right over the top of your brush pile or your whatever you're trying to see or whatever you're trying to mark with a buoy marker and again if you uh if you don't have spot lock function on a trolling motor like that highly recommend get that buoy marker out and go over with this 2d or down imaging screen we're gonna go down imaging on this one and we should be going right over the top of it right here there it is right there so now that i have it i'm gonna throw that buoy marker out right on top of it you can see there's some fish they're not very big but there's some fish right on top of that thing so and once we have the buoy, buoy marker out we're going to circle back with the trolling motor and uh, preferably face upwind into our buoy marker all right well show you on the live scope there there are definitely fish stacked up if it zooms back through it yeah there's fish right over the top of that thing unfortunately uh <laughs> we have some bigger boats today coming through the river and uh, this is going to get pushed around so i'm i'm not going to be able to use this today unfortunately uh, but typically this is what you do you set up into the wind my, the bow of my boat is pointing into the wind um, if you don't have some sort of anchor lock function you can still use your foot pedal on your trolling motor just keep it pointed into the wind it helps really well with boat control and then this is a great indicator of where that brush pile or in this case this concrete little pillar is these waves would have pushed that buoy. And that buoy, for those of you who aren't used to using a buoy, that buoy just unravels uh, until that anchor falls to the bottom. But when you get these waves, it unravels even more as it rises up. And then it drifts off from where you were trying to mark, in this case, a little concrete pillar. There he is, got him. Wow, that's a light tap. Either he's a small fish or that's a decent size eater. Yeah, that's a good size crappie right there. As I throw my rod in the water, don't want to do that. There we go. Some uh, St. Croix River crappie. Get the bump board out and see what this guy is. Oh yeah, he's uh, 11, almost 11 and a half. There's 11, in, there's 11 right there. He's just shy of 11 and a half crappie. That's a quality, quality eater. The one thing I did want to talk about, because this came up in a separate video of, I think it was the down imaging video, how to start to look for brush piles. And you have to understand, most people that are going to drop brush piles are going to drop them on contour, not super s steep like drop-offs, but a, a gradual drop-off. They're not going to be absolutely flat. And if you were to look on a, uh, the river map, the Navionics map here, you would notice that there's a point that comes out and then it kind of cuts back in. There's a, it's a fairly gradual contour before it drops off into the main river channel here. So there's the point that comes out. I'll zoom out a little bit here. So there's a point that comes out and I'm right on the edge of where it goes from a gradual contour drop off to a super steep one going into the main river channel where it drops off into like 35 40 feet this is where i would start to look for brush piles if, if i was on a river system like when i was on uh, watts bar lake in tennessee i pointed out in one of those videos that the secondary underwater points um, on the i think it was like the southwest corner of them or the southwest side of them would be the outside turn it seemed like that was consistently where i was finding brush piles and it, usually what happens is people catch crappie in a certain area and they want crappie to hold there so they'll drop brush piles or you know trees or cement blocks or something on that that section of water and typically that usually is around where these gradual drop-offs kind of go into steeper ones There he is. There he is. That's a better fish too, I think. Or he's just a fighter. It's a little fish. He hit it harder than the, that big one did though. It's probably nine incher, I bet. And it might be a little shy. Oh, he's, he's eight and three quarters. You know what? There's no size limit on the river. There's just a bag limit. So we're going to throw them in. 
probably fry them up later tonight. Still tastes the same. The, the bite is, is super tricky. Um, let me talk about that real quick. So both those fish, when I cast it over the top of this, this little concrete pillar, they're not thumping it. Basically what I'm feeling is as I'm reeling, that rod tip is just loading up more so than it would with just my eighth ounce jig. And that's how I know I got a bite. Um, it's not like you're, you're going up to them and uh, vertical jigging this or putting it at a vertical approach and they're coming up and thumping it. I know in a lot of different parts of the country, that's the typical bite. But up here in the northern part of the country, Wisconsin, Minnesota, because you're casting so much um, for these fish, the bite's gonna just feel more like a, a load up of the rod tip. And that's those first two fish, that's exactly what it felt like. So be aware of that when you're doing a lot more casting, the bite that bite's gonna feel a lot different than if you were just vertical jigging. There he is, got him. That rod tip just loaded up. I didn't even feel the bite. Just felt the, the weight on the rod tip. Come on there, buddy. Yeah. Another chunker. It's not as big, I don't think. He's probably a 10. He, I think he might have been just swimming with it, coming off that, that concrete piling. I need the players for this guy. You know, that chartreuse pattern, year-round, anything chartreuse, white chartreuse, black chartreuse, catches those crappie no matter where you go. Oh yeah, he's another 10 and a quarter. 10, 10 and a quarter right there. Going in the live well. It's a little guy, I think. Yeah. He still might eat, we'll see. I don't know how much more time I'm going to be able to stay out here. It just seems like the the more we get into the later part of the morning, the more boat traffic there is, and it's so so difficult to uh, stay on this spot. He's just shy, just shy at nine, but I'll still fry him up. It's so difficult to stay on this spot right now because of all these these bigger yachts pushing some wake. So. Oof. That's where I would start to look if you were looking at a lake map trying to find brush piles on a lake that you've never fished before. Try the outside edges of points and try places like here. If, we, if I zoom out a little bit further, there's a backwater bay that comes in and I would just side scan this entire area um, relative to that time of year. Right now we're in, we're in late August, getting into September here. And this time of year, these crappie are going to be you know, typically they're going to be 15 to 25 feet of water during the winter time once we start getting into like late october november they're probably going to push out that 25 plus foot range for us up north um, and even even in the reservoirs down south you're probably going to see that as well um, so depending on the time of year understand what the depth range you should be looking at and that is how i would go about picking spots on a lake contour map where should i side scan over to find these brush piles there he is And flying out of there. That's gonna be the last one because that was about 40 casts before I caught this guy. That bite's really slowing down. Throw this guy in the live well. All right, well, there you go couple nice uh, this I think this was like 11 and a half and this guy was like 11 11 and a quarter um, caught a bunch of them gonna go fry these up for lunch uh, throw these back in the live well real quick but that uh, that's pretty much how I use uh, side imaging to mark the waypoints and then you got to have a buoy marker at all times in your boat unfortunately today because of the river system that I'm on, there's a lot of boat traffic on the weekends with the buoy marker, like I said in the, in the video, what it does, when this falls to the bottom, it stops on unraveling like this. But when you get those four or five foot waves, it unravels even further. And then that buoy drifts off from where you need to, I guess, be casting at. So really, unfortunately today, 
it wasn't the greatest time to try this out but if you have a lake that you don't have these big 40 foot yachts cruising by highly highly recommend using this to cast at or to vertical jig over um, if you're using your waypoint to find side imaging um, side imaging is key i get questions all the time of like what sonar units i should buy uh, if you're brand new to the fishing electronics game if you can find a second hand something on facebook marketplace or craigslist uh two year old you know a one to two maybe three year old unit that has side imaging i highly recommend going that route versus a brand new unit that only has 2d sonar or down imaging so brand new that's probably going to be about 500 bucks the hummingbird helix 5 i think is priced in at about 500 bucks the garmin striker series that seven inch screen is about 500 bucks so 500 bucks is what you're going to look at to get into a brand new unit with side imaging capability used i would probably guess it's going to be three to four hundred bucks still um, if you can find something for less than 300 bucks that has side imaging like an older hummingbird like an 898 ci unit i would probably pick that up if it was if it's your first time buying a fishing uh, fish finder unit if you want a further description on settings of side imaging i got a video i did i think two three weeks ago i'll link it down below in the video description you can click on that um, and I li i'll link my entire setup and the uh the marker buoys huge thank you to crappie cove go to crappiecove.com check out the uh the new lures they got or plastics they got they got a bunch of different rod and reel setups. You can get ACC crappie sticks at Crappie Cove, or you can go to the ACC crappie sticks website. They are back in stock. Um, they got back in stock, I believe the first week of August here. So if you were waiting to get an ACC crappie sticks rod, I'll link them down below. They are back in stock, check them out. Um, if you got any comments or questions, or you wanna see a future video with something a little more specific, post in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always love hearing from you. So I'm gonna get off the water here, fry these fish up, and uh, do some editing. So appreciate you watching as always. We'll see you.